What's going on everyone? Justin here with Trading Cards and More back with another box rip. Today we're going to do in some 91-92 NBA Hoops Series 2. So got the USA team cards in here. Got some rookies like Mutombo, Larry Johnson, and so on. And some pretty cool cards. These are my last two boxes of these. So yeah, we are going to get into it. And lots of Jordans in here. I think there's at least five cards with Jordan on it probably know this by now but yeah I was actually looking into buying one of these um, the rack boxes because there's a special card with Jordan on it that's not in this box here but the boxes are pretty expensive so I'm not really sure if it's worth it what's going on Ted scratch and Ted today Arthur how's it going it's getting real excited for the basketball season that's a little over a month away now. Um, also, I think the uh, documentary with uh, um, McGuire and Sosa was out today. Clayton, what's going on? So if you guys know anything about that, or if you guys have uh, seen the first episode of that documentary, let me know in the chat, because um, I might hop on ESPN after this and see if I can watch it. I can't remember the name of it. It's kind of name. But, yeah, just been organizing more cards today, getting all those kind of done. Um, might up, end up, is that Alvin Robertson? No, Derek Carper. Mitch Richmond, Stockton. You can see we got rookies in here. There's like the top 10 rookies are in this set. Or I think, yeah, I think the draft picks it says up to 10. 89 Fleer box. Um, I already actually already did that box. <clears throat> Um, and I think those cards are kind of going down <laughs> in value. So, yeah, the, um, we pulled like three Jordan base cards, I think, out of that box. There's James Worthy. It's a cool box, but it's, you know, expensive. Luke Longley, rookie. There we go. Nice one. And this one has, uh, tr Jordan wins the first tribute, or first title Tribune card. So that's our first Jordan in the box. A little center a left to right on that one. Sweet. I always get this confused because there's multiple cards with the Tribune. But this one has Jordan going out for the shot there. You got Magic Johnson, Vladi Divac, and not sure who that is. But very cool card. <clears throat> James, what's going on? Yeah, whatever you guys want to talk about today. Oh, we got another Jordan. So, first three packs, we got two Jordans already. Looking pretty good. It's got the trophy there. See if these surfaces, you know, they do look kind of weird. See, when you hit it with the light, that surface just looks kind of weird. Kind of like, has a weird look to it. I don't know. Some of them do that and some of them really don't. Like, see if you look at this one, it looks normal. Hmm. Bernard King. Jeff Turner, Carl Malone, Michael Jordan, nice, three Jordans out of the first three packs, four Jordans out of the first three packs, I forgot that, when you get the Supreme Court, like two cards later, you get the uh, USA Team Jordan, sweet, and Scott, Scotty Pippen to end it out, so four Jordans off the bat, did I forget to grab more sleeves, I think I, did I grab, no, I guess I didn't. They're right over there. I'll get some more here. Nice. Gotta love this USA team card. And then if you watch my video, uh, the McDonald's packs, they have the same card except for it's numbered differently on the back, and then it has a totally different image of Jordan on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think I'm in the process of trying to get some more of those sets. And this one's infamous for be always being left to right off centered, and this one actually looks really good. So I'm, I'm surprised with that. I mean, it's not... 100% perfect, but it's pretty close to the untrained eye. Nice. Let me grab some more sleeves. But I might end up hitting this card shop. It's not too, it's like about an hour from me, not quite. And get some, bo some boxes to organize some of these cards. And then um, also, I want to get some more sleeves. Um, if I can get them like local and get them for like a good deal, because when you buy them online, you gotta pay 
a little premium because you're getting them shipped, priority mail, and all that nonsense. So, yeah, that might be one of the my favorite ones in the sets: Supreme Court and then the uh, USA Team one. So, so cool looking cards. 88 Fleer. Okay, yeah, that would be a little risky for me right now. Maybe in the future, but those are like three thousand dollars or something like that. Last time I checked. And I already have the Jordan All-Star card. I just need the Jordan, Jordan base card and then the sticker card or whatever. Um, but I'll probably end up getting those. The prices are kind of like softening up a little bit right now. And I think when basketball gets back going, people are going to kind of start to forget about um, a lot of these, you know, Hall of Famers and stuff like that. Um... So I think that's what happened a lot of, you know, that's why you've seen like Shaq rookie kind of went through the roof on the price and all the jo old Jordan cards and Pippen because of the documentary and then just like all the different players kind of went crazy. But I think with uh, basketball coming back, I think, it, I think it might just soften up a little bit because I'm starting to get some of the Jordan cards um, to, you know, for... A little bit more reasonable prices, I guess you could say. Tim Hardaway, Isaiah, yeah. Scotty Pippen, Sir, Scotty Pippen Supreme Court with uh, Magic Johnson on it. It's a pretty cool card. Yeah, those are coming out pretty nicely centered. Usually they're off. At least I know that Jordan's always off centered. So not too bad so far. Four Jordans, about 25% in. Sly one, what's going on? Anybody has any topics to cover, let me know. Get some chat going. But yeah, I'm, I want to see that Maguire Sosa documentary. Um, I watched all, the whole Last Dance one. Um, I can just watch the on my TV, even though I don't have like cable or nothing. I got like the ESPN app or whatever, and just pull that up. You can watch all the different shows if it's going to be on there. Um, I'm not sure if it'll, it won't go on until it's completely done with the series or, or how it works out, but definitely want to look it up. Mitch Richmond, Larry Bird, Supreme Court, that one is off-centered. Yeah, I got to get more of those McDonald's sets because I really like them. There's a handful of good cards. You got, you know, Dikembe Mutombo, Larry Johnson rookie card in there, which I think is kind of undervalued because it's... It's kind of like a variant of the actual set because it's McDonald's. And then you got like your Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, um, Dream Team cards. There's Mutombo, Speak of the Devil. <laughs> that one's looking pretty good. Let's see if that background looks, yeah, it looks all right. Nice, and it's actually nicely centered. That's, that's rare on these ones. Usually I've been pulling these out and they're always left to right off centered. Dikembe Mutombo. Not the rookie of the year, but Hall of Famer. Sweet card. Got to get a handful of them graded. I think most of my pile that I have was ones that I decided not to grade because they just were off-centered. Muggsy Bogues. Larry Nance. One show and it should be on here soon. Huh, just one show. Did you watch it at all or no? I thought it was a whole series, just like the Jordan documentary. Game one, Chicago. We got Patrick Ewing. See, and I should know these. Chuck Person. Chuck Person. There's a card with him and I think Larry Bird going up against each other. <clears throat> yeah, because the uh, McGuire price is definitely softened. I looked at his rookie and it was only like. Two hundred and fifty dollars, and it was up there around four hundred. I picked one up for one thirty and got a really good price on it, and figured I'd I'd hold off to the kind of the peak of the um, documentary. But even before it reached that point, the prices started to come back down. I think because the price just shot up so quick, it went from like seventy five dollars to like four hundred, literally like in a day, because everybody was anticipating the price being higher, and everybody rushed out and bought them, and now. 
like there's not as much commotion going on. So I think the sellers are kind of like coming down on their price to try to get them sold. You know, contemplating the price potentially crashing back down, but I was hoping that uh, it would kick off and be pretty good. But we'll see what happens. Only time can tell. I have it recorded, but I haven't watched it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check it out after the um, after the live stream here. Michael Jordan scoring kings, or all-time scoring leader. This is our fifth Jordan of the box, so I think we got all five of them. Looks pretty decent on the centering. Surface looks good. Corners look good. Looking good. I got a whole stack of cards. I probably went through a big stack the other day. I still have all the USA ones, and I got all the Skybox ones from yesterday. Larry Bird's, Magic Johnson's. I'll probably only send like one or two of each of those ones out, but... My uh, PSA submission is quickly building up. And to answer anybody's question, um, PSA did raise their price, but only on the ultra-modern stuff, so anything from 2017 to 2020. So the really, really new stuff. It now costs... If you send in 50 or more cards, it's $15 a card. And if you send 100 or more cards, it's $12 a card. So it went up from $9 to 12 from $10 to 15 So a pretty big price spike, which definitely ticked a lot of people off. But um, I think that's where they were getting a lot of their influx, is like so many people bulk submitting um, modern cards. And I like the fact that they didn't affect a lot of the other people. Like, they didn't affect everybody just because of some people like kind of overusing the system so to speak um, because like like me I send a lot of the modern stuff but not the ultra modern stuff so they kind of broke it down into a bunch of categories now like just like um, trading card games you know Pokemon cards or whatever you got you have to send that stuff in separately which kind of sucks but at the same time if it if it helps the process along quicker so we get our cards back faster I'm all for it and also, if they do the pr different price changes and stuff like that, it, it'll affect one area, but it won't affect the other area. Um, but right now, they have a po send in Pokemon cards. Do we got another Dikembe Mutombo? Yes, we do. Man, and he was a fourth draft pick. I can't believe that. Um, basically, um, yeah, the, the, they got a Pokemon... Um, a deal going right now uh seven dollars and fifty cents a card till the end of the month it's a quarter quarterly special so i'm going to be sending in whatever i have here at the end of the month before that quarterly special ends getting people's cards back i looked at the at the main page and it said 100 100 days plus on all the bulk stuff basically um even uh like i send in uh the there's a regular, but then there's a, uh, the $20 price point per card is considered economy, and I didn't see any area that where that was like any quicker. So 100 business days, you're looking at over four months right now. And my stuff just checked in that I sent in last month. So we just checked in, it's middle of June, July, August, September, October, November. I'm talking mid-November before I get those three shipments back from last month. That's if it takes the full five months, which I hope it doesn't. Um, like I said, I got the shipment back from February. I got that back at the middle of uh, middle of May, which was only three months on a 85-day turnaround um, with the fact that they were shut down that long, too. Uh, Scratch and Ted. Binder of Pokemon cards for $50. Yeah, people are just... Yeah. I don't ever try to buy anything on Marketplace for anything like that. Um, uh, no, you do not have to send sports in separately, uh, which is which is one of the nice points about it. It's just based on the years, and then all sports cards can be sent in uh, with other sports cards. It doesn't have to be the same sport. It's just like if it's a trading card game, um, it has to be separate from... There's Larry Johnson's. He was the number one draft. Number one draft and rookie of the year. Doesn't always happen that way. For instance, Jordan was not number one draft, but was the rookie of the year. 
Zion, not number one draft. Probably not going to be a rookie of the year. Yeah, just, just because they're gold, they're not necessarily rare. I don't know any, like, the gold, like, ultra-rare Pokemon cards, or what's... Not sure what you're talking about. There's another Luke Longley. There's another Jordan. This one's off-centered. Thought I saw some nick or bend on it, but I can't see it now. All right, grab my other pack of sleeves here. Do, do, do. But yeah, just the fact that you're um, separating the different cards um, based on the years and stuff. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Zion was number one draft, but he's probably not going to make Rookie of the Year. You know what I mean? Um, that doesn't always ring true. Larry Bird, Kenny Anderson, or two draft pick. No, I said he wasn't going to be Rookie of the Year, but he was the first draft pick. So, just like the other guy, was, he was first draft pick and Rookie of the Year, whereas Zion is not going to be. <clears throat> I don't even think they're going to make the playoffs. I was looking at all the stats online to try to see what what they needed to do, but I don't think they're going to make it in. But who knows? Time will tell. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be weird if they don't have fans there, though. Hopefully that doesn't happen for too long where they go up, go without fans. Yeah, he was out for the first half, and if the, if the season hadn't gone bad and he would have made the playoffs, he, he would have still had a shot at it, I think. But... Um, yeah, more than likely John Morant's going to get it. I just want another John Morant rookie card. I know I got some, uh, the ones I sent in in March, I had a bunch of John Morants and a bunch of Zions, so those are going to be coming back. Hopefully by next month, if not July, August. Um, and then, you know, right in the middle of all the basketball action going on, I'll be able to get some of those cards up for sale. Hopefully, and make some money. It just sucks because you you send them in, everything's the market's going great, and then four, five, six months later, the market could be um, completely different. So it could it could be better or it could be worse, you know. Do 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 another Jordan, very nice. But one of my viewers on here the other day uh, bought. A John Morant and another card off of me, so that was pretty cool. This one looks like it's got a little something at the top. Joe DeMars, Pippen, and faked out by the Michael Adams every time. Chris Mullen. Yeah, I thought about getting this box. Oh, another Larry Johnson uh, with the rack packs, but. You're only getting that one other, like, Michael Jordan card, and it's, I could probably just buy that other card for cheaper than it cost me for the box. Get a whole stack of them. Um, very good on the centering and everything. Looking good. That gold tooth there. Might not have a season if the owners keep trying to make the players. Uh, I I heard the was it the owner that said that there's definitely a baseball season gonna happen, so I read I read that article a few days back. So they're saying guaranteed like definitely having a, a baseball season. So, but don't know. Thought that was supposed to happen around July fourth, if I remember. Just want to see sports, man. But I'm more excited for ba basketball. But sucks for a lot of these like minor league players too. Like all the the prospects for baseball that are all worth so much money right now. Like the Domin Dominguez or the Bobby Witt Jr. Like they won't even. Are they not going to even get to play this year? <laughs> you know. Yeah, base baseball players are kind of greedy. Yeah. Alrighty. Wasn't that why there was that strike back in 94? Player strike? 
I couldn't come to agreements. Sean Kemp. Larry Bird. I just don't like that one because it's like from behind him. I think they could have did a better shot on that card. John Starks. Uh, there was a couple years there I watched football, but... I used to go play poker at this uh, bowling alley. We played poker till like 11 o'clock or something like that. And then the chef would, uh, he was really good at cooking steak and you'd get a, like a 13 ounce ribeye with any, like mashed potatoes or, oh my God, what happened to this card? <laughs> Look at that. Hold on, let me see. Like what the heck? It's like completely got indented. That sucks. Larry has been destroyed. But you get uh, you get the sides and everything. And um, it was like, what was it, like 10 bucks or something? Blake's in here. What's going on, Blake? I seen your video where you're prepping for your trip. That was pretty cool. Sticker that you had on the car. Man, every one of these cars has that same. Like somehow the, the pack got destroyed. Oh, you're already on the road? Wow, that's crazy. So what all did you bring? You got like a sleeping bag and blow up mattress for the car or whatever. Got all your phone chargers and all that good stuff. Change of clothes. On the road again. Yeah, the gas price has been pretty consistent. I know here in Wisconsin it's a dollar ninety nine right now for a regular premiums two fifty. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I seen that sticker decal you put on your car, that was a cool idea. I bought one of those, but it's just a like a rollout map. And you kinda of cross out the states that you've been to as you go. Of course we I, I've been to forty two out of the forty eight continental. Just in the last, less than two years now. Five mil is five mil, but if you're supposed to make 33 mil, you would be pissed. Yeah. Oh, it's still in Ohio. What's the gas price like in Ohio? Got Magic Johnson, guarded by Mullen. I should know these players by now. Some of these cards are so weird. Walter Davis, 1976 USA basketball team. Holy crap. Seventh leading scorer among active players. Still member of the gold medal winning 1976 Olympic team. Still playing in the NBA. 4.3 points, 2.0 assists per game. Leading the USA to wins. Wow. How's he not in the Hall of Fame? Walter Davis. $1.80 to $1.99. Yeah. Yeah, it's $1.99, $2.50 for premium. Um, I know Illinois is more expensive. My parents live down there and... I'm always like, yeah, it's two bucks here, or whatever the price is here, and it's always like 30, 40, 50 cents more down there. <laughs> You're only paying an, an extra like 40, 50 cents for premium then. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that's what that's what it is here. But I know Ohio and Michigan, they, it's gapped a lot closer, but it's ours is like that now too. Well, I guess we got a lot of Divac there. Cause it used to be pretty pretty spaced out but i think when the price shot all the way back down to a dollar a gallon it was at 99 cents here in town for like a day or two and then it shot back up to like 109 or whatever 110 120. Uh, another jordan tribune card very nice yeah i don't know what kelly's at but when we were there it was like four dollars a gallon it was crazy and I had to get an oil change before we left there, and I think I paid like 80 bucks or something. Stuff was a ripoff, and it was right at the Valvoline place, because we already drove like almost 3,000 miles on the trip by the time we got there. Then when we were leaving, I had to get an oil change. We did the same thing when we were down in, was it Alabama, I think? Alabama or Louisiana or something. That was on our first trip, across, or our second trip, which was across the East Coast. Um, 
We got stuck at the place getting oil change for like two hours. I was pissed. They didn't tell us that they didn't have one of the oil filters for. I have a basic car. It's a Chevy um, Cruze, and they didn't even have the filter for it. And then they had to order the part and have them like drive it over, and it took like an extra like two hours. They didn't discount me or nothing. <clears throat> Uh, these boxes I got for like 30, 35 or 40, something like that. I think I got four boxes for like 125 shipped. So, 20, is that 25 bucks a piece? No, $30 a piece, I think, roughly. Right around 30 a piece. Nice, we got the two Jordans again. Sweet. It's always one and then two cars later, the next one. With that Stacy Augman, I think, in the middle. So, this was all in the first box, too. We killed it, man. Here's Magic Johnson's All-Star Team 1. Yeah, Blake just does um, all kinds of videos, vlogs, and stuff. Chris Mullen. Patrick Ewing. All right, let's leave up the two Jordan cards. We'll see how many Jordans we got on this first box here. Definitely got some good ones, and the centering's looking really good on these. I usually just set them all aside, and then one day when I'm feeling like doing the work, I'll go through and see which ones I'm going to grade, which usually is most of them, unless there's bad centering or some surface issue or something. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven Jordan cards. Nice. Eleven Jordan cards. That means we got a triple on something. I think it was that Tribune card, right? Yeah, we got three Tribunes and then two of all the other cards. So, very, very cool. 11 Jordans on a box we paid $30 for. Cannot beat it, man. All right, box number two. Yeah, they pretty much canceled a lot of state fairs and all the county fairs and stuff like that. My mom was telling me about that yesterday. It kind of sucks. And 4th of July fireworks and it's just like, Man, glad I work from home and I can just focus on work right now. But even that, I mean, with PSA and their turnarounds right now, until I get the next shipment back, I'm kind of like stuck with the inventory I got. I mean, I still got $25,000 in inventory in my store, but sales are starting to kind of soften. Without the regular big month sales, I can't spend as much money on inventory. But these boxes are fun and get a lot of cards in there that can grade and stuff. So that always works out. No state no state fair fair for California. When's a state fair in California? That's like isn't that like September or October? They're already they're already calling that off. Jeez. Do 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 The dealer. Who is the dealer? What happened? What? I must have missed that video. July. Oh, California's in July? Really? From a gambling site. Hmm. Doing some online gambling there, are you? Like to, uh, what, how, how many miles did you get driven today? Mitch Richmond, Larry Bird, send me a private message there, Blake. Actually, I'm gonna put my phone. Forgot to turn the notifications off, but <laughs> I'm not getting any notifications right now, anyways. Gerald Wilkins. I don't know why he he kind of looks like Dominic Wilkins. <laughs> Magic Johnson. 
of Jordan so far on box number two. We got Larry Johnson rookie. They are brothers. That's what I thought. I just, I'm not in the loop. <laughs> There's a lot of basketball facts from the 80s and 90s I just don't know about. Um, looking decent on that one. Looks like that corner is a little sharp, kind of weird. Probably just extra. Yeah. Sometimes the corner, when they cut these corners, sometimes it just doesn't get cut like all the way off and it leaves that little remnant on there. And it kind of looks funky. One of the annoying things about these older cards. He had a DJ at wedding. Wow, they still have weddings going on. Thought they was only like supposed to be 10 people in a group or something like that. I know there are certain governors that are like all ticked off about it, like, oh sure, we can all uh, gather to do these protests for 100 people or whatever, but if you want to gather in a group for a wedding or a funeral, you can only have 10 people. <laughs> Some stupid rules. I'll tell you what. Let's arrest people for being in a group, hanging out at a park, but... Let's let out criminals, because <laughs> uh, there's so much stupidity going on in the world. So I just try to not look at the news. Oh, it was crazy. How many people were there then? W were you like at the ex like was it an outdoor one in or what was it? What's going on? Draw time cards from Australia. Crikey! Put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> That's like every American trying to be Australian. Uh, oh my god, we got Jordan completely off, off center and it's got a crimped edge. Look at that. Oh, that's what they let him have 30 to 40 people. That's so dumb. Like, look at that edge got crimped on that Jordan. And it's pretty off center cut. So, yeah, my sister was had a wedding outside. How many was that? Twenty seventeen? I think it was twenty seventeen. Cause she had her kid in twenty eighteen. That means my niece is gonna be two years this year, this November. Holy crap! Um, theme parks will be opening? Really? I would, I would think uh, theme parks would be like the last stage of opening up. Because you're getting a lot of people cram packed in there, people standing in lines, just a lot of people in one area. Patrick Ewing. I'm just waiting for the flights to go back to normal so I can fly the heck out of here. But I'm not gonna jump through a bunch of hoops to fly. Just hoping hoping it goes back to normal, but who knows. Fly Drexler. <laughs> Yelled at him for having drinks on the dance floor. Three to six three to six people can only <laughs> oh my god. Who is enforcing this crap? Oops did I forget to put a Oh, let's just pack some. We got the Jordan Championship card. So, looks like it's going to be another good box for Jordan cards. That's three Jordans so far. Not even fourth of the way in here. Bernard King. Magic Johnson. Supreme Court card. Ah, Six Flags in um, California. We got Six Flags. Um... It's in Gurney. It's north of Chicago. It's, it's like 50 minute drive from where I'm at. Um, that's the, always the six, six Flags I always went to. It's called Six Flags Great America. They got an old roller coaster ride there. That my parents used to ride back way back in the day. And we went on that quite a few times. It's, it's really like old and shaky. It's a wooden coaster, but it's a lot of fun. I haven't been there in a, 
quite a few years probably. Um, just kind of got bored of it. We would go pretty much every other year. We would go there. And then when I got older, you know, going with friends or girlfriends or whatever, we'd go in groups and stuff. And I've rode all the coasters enough. So, haven't really felt the need, but when I was in England, I, I did some roller coasters out there in Blackpool. They got the theme park out there and they had some pretty fun wooden roller coasters that we rode. Those things were crazy, man. And the lines weren't too bad either. You could go on them and then just wait in line for another 10 minutes or whatever and go on it again. Magic Johnson. Very nice. Got a Kenny Anderson. Um, was there last year? TTS Gaming, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I just... I know the price nowadays is like over 50 bucks just for, just for the entrance fee. And then they charge you so much money to park your car. I think what we used to do is we'd park across the street and just walk over there from like McDonald's or something. Um, but yeah... Even the cheap parking, I think, they charge you an arm and a leg. But then you could, like, bring your own food or whatever, and then if you're in there and you want to just go out to your car for a little break and grab some food and then go back in. I always liked their uh, their fries. They had, like, some seasoned fries with, like, the, that salt on them, that lowery salt or whatever. Just seasoning salt. They used to salt those things like crazy. I always liked... I always like that. But the food just gets so expensive. This one's got a Dean Corner duck on it. Um, oops, forgot to sleeve up Jordan. So the second one's about the same on the centering. Uh, maybe it's not as bad actually, but it doesn't have the crimped edge either. Still off center though. Yep, Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That's where I was. Um, they're on your bucket list. Very cool. Yeah, I killed it on all the carnival games there. Pretty much one and everything, um, but like like even current like games here, you'll pay like five pounds to play the game, and then like oh if you play it again, you know I'll give you twice as many shots or or whatever. They always try to lure you back in, but every time I played the game the second time I I won the major prize. So Six Flags Magic Mountain. I know that, that Six Flags made a um, water park in there too, but I never, I never went there to do the water park, only to do the all the roller coasters and the, um, the arcades and the bumper cars and all the fun stuff. Racing waves in Illinois. Uh, I haven't really been to a lot of water water parks. Um, when I was when I was younger, we used to go to. Uh, what's it called? It's in Rockford. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's that really big water park right off the interstate. Water, what's it called? I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but I never really went there as a kid, but when I got older, once again, the friends and girlfriend wanted to go, so I went. Uh, went to a pretty big one out in North Carolina as well. That was a lot of fun. I had fun going down like the different slides and stuff. But, um, yeah, not planning any trips because I uh, can't really travel right now. Got nowhere to go, just kind of been chilling here, working. Can't fly anywhere right now, so it's kind of sucks, but just trying to focus on work right now. Uh, water parks in California, now the Hurricane Harbor, Magic Mountain, yeah, interesting. Patrick Ewing, Steve Smith. Anthony Hardaway, Sean Kemp, Larry Bird. Maybe that card's got a big line through it. Like somebody put a cutting blade through it or something. Larry Nance, Moses Malone, without the glasses. Looks like he's being guarded by David Robinson there. Dominique Wilkins, his brother. <laughs> Barkley. Interesting. 
pile of cards is about to fall over here. There we go. Hiking from Devil's Lake. Oh, very cool, man. Yeah. My ex and I went there. Um, we walked around the whole thing. You, you go up the side. You, you go up this, like, trail up to the top. I don't know. Maybe you're, like, two, 200 feet or so. Maybe 100 feet. I don't know. Above the actual lake. And then you come down, and it's, like, these, like, steps that are all stone. And it's just really cool weaving in and out. And then there's a structure up there with, like, they call it Devil's Doorway. It's like a bunch of rocks and you can like stand under it. We did that and it's really cool. We actually camped outside of the lake. Um, there's a little campground there and you can get like a little cabin. Went up and got some, fi got some fish from a little pond and cooked them by the fire and camped out and then uh, got up in the morning and walked out there. I had like a backpack and like four or five water bottles and by the end of the day we ran through every single water bottle <laughs> we had to walk from the one end of the lake all the way back like along those train tracks and there was uh they have a big concession stand there and i got like a strawberry smoothie and i was just like so thirsty <laughs> but man there was people like literally going up these stairs i mean it's like it's not an easy trail by any means and um I mean, you're hiking up these big steps, and, like, these people are going up there. They got no backpack, no bottle of water. No, I'm just like, man, these people are out of their freaking mind, man. Because, like, literally, like I said, I mean, I brought, like, some snacks, like, some energy bars, like, four or five, like, full bottles of water. And we literally went through every single one between the two of us. And, uh, I mean, I was fully prepared, but... And it wasn't like it was, like, super hot out. It was summertime, but it wasn't, like... To where you're like gonna get heat stroke or anything it was just like all the walking and just the, you're burning the energy and yeah basically ran ran out of water right at, right at the right at the end there and luckily you know we made it to the concession stand and got a smoothie that was freaking good uh we did that trail yep temperature today 75 degrees yeah so we did the one side and then we came back down and then we walked to the other side, and then we went up that trail and back down. It was just so hard because when you're going down those big steps, man, you got to really be careful. And I didn't want to, like, bust my stuff because I've had my knees where they're kind of not the greatest from doing lots of walking and stuff, especially when I used to golf. That was, like, 10, 12 years ago, though. Uh, we got Larry Johnson. Two Larry Johnsons, actually, pretty much back-to-back. Those are looking pretty good. Some of those Larry Johnsons are nicely centered. Colombo, what's going on? I'm doing good. Cedar Point in 2003. Sandusky. Very cool. Yeah, I don't think I've been to the Cedar Point. But everybody told me I needed to go there. Carlone. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Another off-center. And <laughs> every time, that one had... Je a Lesbian and Stacy Ogman was after the other card there. A little bit different order, but pretty much the same. Chris Mullen, Doug Smith. So where are all the other draft picks out of this set if they only give you the first 10 draft picks? Unless the other ones just don't say their draft pick cards on them. I feel like that's kind of strange. This, even this one's off-centered left to right. Interesting. But yeah, I loved um, um, Devil's Lake. That was really cool. I mean, I've been up to the Dells quite a, quite a few times. We even camped. I even camped out in the Dells a couple times. Uh, not like in a tent, but those little like cabins that you can rent out, and you can like. Usually, there's not very many amenities or nothing, but. Yep. One was at like a, um, what was it? It was a uh, campground and we got like a, ca like a camper thing. And uh, that was, uh, went, went swimming and it, freaking water was cold. Remember that? They had a swimming pool there, but that thing was cold, man. 
I think it even said like the swimming pool was only open until a certain time, and I was like, ah, eh, screw it, we're going. Uh, Buffalo, uh, BW3's Buffalo Wild Wings, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I've been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and um, is that Ohio? Uh, Cleveland, I think. Yeah, I went there, that was pretty cool. Carl Malone. Sam Bowie, Chris Mullen, you ever went whitewater rafting up in North Wisconsin, TTS, I went years ago, my buddy had a friend and they would all go out, it was on an Indian reservation, you'd camp out and it was like five dollars to camp out just like a trust system, you'd go to this box and put money into it. And you get this whole like camp area yourself. I guess there was even bears around there, but we never seen them. There'd have, there had been a tornado that came through and there was like literally trees ripped out of the ground and you'd see these roots in the tree and it was like 20, 30 feet tall, it was crazy. But we camped out and then we'd party it up. And then the next day we would go to the um, whitewater rafting and you'd pay like 30 bucks or whatever it was per person it's like two people per raft and you you each get a paddle and they drive you out to the like the beginning and then you'd raft all day until the end of it and then you get out right there at the end which is where you paid or whatever and then you give them back your raft and whatnot man that was crazy there were spots you could jump off from like 20 30 feet plus I did that, which was insane. I never jumped off of anything, but I just just went for it. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Then there was another area where you, you just lay down, like lay on your back and put your arms across your chest and, and the water would just take you. And it was right along this slabbed rock that was like almost at a 45 degree angle. So you just get in the water, the water would literally take you down and then the water kind of went down and then there was like a current right there so it was like pushing back and it would literally shoot you down into the water you go under the water and it would literally like shoot you up out of the out of the water like 20 feet out it was crazy and then when it shot you out it was like a almost like a whirlpool where it would like it would suck you back in towards the where you got sucked down into the water so you'd have to hurry up and paddle off to the side uh, real fast to get out of the water and man that was crazy i did it and it was definitely an adre adrenaline rush and then <clears throat> the second year i went there was a guy and he was rafting the whole thing with his uh dog i think he had a, like a golden retriever i think it was um anyways he he gets out and goes and does it he didn't have a life jacket on here or anything but you don't really need one i mean it wasn't like a sketchy area so he goes down in, into the water and then he calls his dog over and his freaking dog goes down in there and we're like oh my god like this dog's in the water like this is crazy so the dog gets sucked down in shoots up 15 20 feet out or whatever he's doggy paddling and this dog's getting sucked right back into the spot and we're like oh no oh my god you know like freaking out for this dog or whatever Stay calm, dog gets sucked back down, shoots back out even further, and then he makes his way out of the water. We're like, oh my god, that, that dog is a daredevil, man, that was crazy. And then when we got to, um, and there was another spot where you could jump off from like 30, 20, 30 feet, whatever you wanted to do, we did that for a while. And then there's another spot where the, the rock or the, the, like the limestone or like the rock on the bottom, the, the bed of the river or whatever, you could feel it and it was really, really smooth. And you would just walk out there and it was like, the water's like rushing and it's hitting you. But as long as you, you stay like balanced, you won't like go into the water. And you go out there and then you, um, you uh, just stand up and then, the, and then the current just takes you and it's almost like you're surfing on the rock. And then at, at, once you hit the end part of it, it starts to kind of go into like white water rapids and you gotta like hurry up and swim. 
to get out of there. That was crazy. That was a crazy one too. And the second year I did it, we got to that white water rapid area and um, we got, our raft got completely like pushed up onto this rock and I'm like trying to like pull, push this off of this rock with like the, um, the paddle and everything. And like, it was, it was crazy. We're like, oh my God, we're stuck on this freaking rock. Like, what are we gonna do, you know? And all of a sudden, like, the the water just hit just right, and it just, like, threw us off. I I was actually, because I was standing up, I got thrown out of the raft. And that was scary, because I'm like, because now I'm, like, rolling down the river, holding on to the raft for dear life. Like, and there's lots of rocks in there, too, so I'm, like, keeping my feet in front of me. And, um, luckily, I was able to pull myself back into the raft, because I'm pretty lightweight. But, yeah, that was a scary moment. But the first, the first part of the whole thing is you go, you're cruising down the river, like nothing going on, and then you hit uh, this, um, uh, what do you call it, waterfall that's like six feet tall maybe. And you just want to keep your raft straight and just kind of like, almost like lay back in your raft and just kind of go, go over it. And after that, it's really metallo and the water's like not deep at all up ahead. So it's just like, even if you fall out of your raft, it's not a big deal. So that first like, waterfall is not a big deal it's the last one you deal with at the at the end of the trip that's like <laughs> it'll get you get your blood pumping that's for sure um but once you get to the end you got this whole series of like this winding area where you like you're constantly steering and like avoiding stuff and like keeping your thing straight because if your thing is not straight and you go over the waterfall it's even a bigger waterfall than the first one the water's like rushing even more. I know the first year we were there, it was really, really running pretty, like the water was higher, so the it was like really strong. And uh, oh, there's another Jordan. Oh, there's another Jordan. <laughs> there's our Stacy Ogman. There's Les Jessman right between them. But yeah, we got um, got to the last part, and uh, that was scary. And we saw the guy with the with the dog, and <laughs> he's dogs just standing up in the freaking raft going over this. This last uh, waterfall was crazy. And then you could chill in that area, like watch the other people that are coming by, like going over it and stuff, and watch and laugh and do whatever. Um, but if you were brave enough, you could go over this um, waterfall and you could go over to the right. And there was always a, a current slightly pulling you back towards the waterfall, but it wasn't, I mean, you could, you could get out of there. But the water was like waist deep, from waist deep to like neck deep. And you could actually walk over to the waterfall, and it was a long. There was like a wall of like rock, and you could pull your way back underneath the actual waterfall itself. So my buddy, he had done it before, but the water was not that strong. This one's got a damaged corner. Doug got it, but he had done it before, and he got underneath the waterfall. I couldn't do it because when I started walking to like back there, the water the the force of the water coming over the waterfall just slamming you in the head like you just couldn't break the force to like get yourself back there it was just so tough so he's like well he's like i'm gonna get back there and i'm gonna reach my arm out all the way and um i'm gonna pu just pull you back there you know what i mean so i got as far as i could put my arm out and he just yanked me in there and uh you're literally like this far away from the water like a f like two feet in front of you is this water like rushing down and then underneath you it's like pretty much like sand I guess um, but we stayed back there for a little while and I just kind of like was getting kind of anxiety over it so I was like I need to like get out of here it's just <laughs> hyperventilating in here uh, so you just you just kind of dive forward and it just pushes you way out there it's pretty pretty cool experience being like behind a waterfall like that but yeah, that was one heck of a trip. And we did that, I did that two years in a row. Um, very, very fun stuff. That's up in like Wisconsin, like up there a ways. It's called the Wolf River, I think it was called. And it's all Indian, Indian reservations, really nice people. You go to this like gas station or whatever it was, not even gas station, it was like a little convenience stop. This guy would truck you out like a whole truck bed of firewood for like the whole weekend. We'd go for like three, four days in a row, camp out like three nights or whatever. 
All right. Kings Island. Oh, man. That's in... Uh, isn't that by Cincinnati or something like that? All right. Let's see what we got on the second box here. We've all, almost been going in for an hour. Just been telling stories. We lost like half of our people. <laughs> Probably got bored of me telling stories. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only got one Tribune on that box. Probably because we got three on the last one. So we averaged 10 Jordans per box. So not too bad. Um, 20 Jordans for basically uh, what I pay. Um, 60 bucks. For 60 bucks, we got we got 20 Jordans. So I'd say we did pretty good. Um, and then plus you got all the rookie cards, obviously, Mutumbo's. Um, Tumbos and Larry Johnson's Luke Longley's. Let's see how many we got of them. I think I sleep most of them. Larry Johnson. Four. I'm guessing we got like maybe six of each or something like that. Pretty good for just two boxes. Yeah. Let's count them up here. So Larry Johnson, we got six. And Mutumbo, we got, looks like four. How do we only get four Mutumbos? I know we had one or two that were damaged too. Maybe we just got kind of killed on the Matumbos. Couple Luke Longleys, three Luke Longleys, four Luke Longleys, five Luke Longleys. So four, five, and six. Um, so yeah, four to six on the rookies. Pretty standard, I guess. Um, camp every day, very cool. Yeah, we used to, I used to go out to Rock Cut and camp out there. Get a nice little lot. It's got like a lot of woods around it, and then. Uh, we go fish at night, catch some bass and bluegills and stuff, and then uh, go walking around. One one year I had some worms because I was going to go fish in the morning, and I hear a freaking raccoon, and the raccoon opened up my um, cooler, which was out right outside my tent, and freaking snagged the worms out of there and ate them all. That, was, that taught me a lesson. <laughs> Darn raccoons. So... Haven't been camping in a while though. I think the last time I went was like, was it like 2015 or 16? And it was just mosquito heaven because it was right by a, like right by a creek or river or whatever, and it just, it was unbearable. But I got a tent. The thing is just kind of falling apart. It's, it's only like a six by nine tent. It's just big enough for a, um, just big enough for the um mattress that goes in there you have an rv that's cool yeah i want to eventually i think if i got an rv one day that would be pretty cool they're just expensive to maintain and everything and expensive on gas obviously my grandparents had one for years and then they finally got rid of it when they were taking care of my grand, uh, great grandpa and then i think they got probably way less than they probably could should have or could have but uh that was a cool camper or RV, um, yours never moves, <laughs> it's funny, yeah, they had one that, you know, it's like the whole, the bedroom, the, the bathroom, the sink, the living area with the couch, table, I mean, you can do everything in there, and they, they would travel all around and see, go see places and stuff, I heard a few stories, but full time here, huh, huh, oh, so you live in yours, oh, wow, that's crazy, where uh where at like what state do you live in didn't you say you lived in california i'm sure the housing there is like ridiculously priced i was talking to a guy and uh he was asking about prices in the midwest out here you can get a i was looking at a house on the lake it was a quarter million a big house and like your typical two bedroom or three bedroom one bath two bath is like 150,000 where i live um, so, really good housing prices here. The taxes aren't bad either, but if you want to get real cheap and go to, like, Missouri or, you know, you want to go live out kind of in the sticks, you can get something for pretty cheap. 600 to park it here with hookups. Holy crap. 600 just to park the thing? Man. That sounds horrible. Yeah, my brother has a, um, mobile home, and I think he pays around 550 to 600 just to have it parked there. And he owns it outright, you know, but you're paying a freaking, practically paying a rent, you know, when you own the thing. Not my idea of something I'd want to do, but, I mean, 
No matter what you do, I guess you gotta pay to live off the land. Um, we've been going for about an hour here, so I think I'm gonna gonna call it. I'm gonna get some food here. Water, power, sewer. Yeah, doesn't seem like water really costs that much, and power. Yeah, I guess if you don't have to pay for electric, that normally would be what fifty to a hundred a month, maybe at most. Water can't be that much money, and then sewer. Yeah, of course, if you're traveling or doing whatever, you find an area to do the dump sites and stuff. I know parks out here that have that, but. Yeah, hopefully you had a good one. Um, Blake, let me know how your trip's going. Send me a DM. Uh, everyone else, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.